Welcome back. This is part two of the Godot top-down tank battle game. In part one, we made the player tank and added some controls to it. And in this part, we're going to talk about making the terrain that we will drive around on top of. In the last video, we created the player tank, which can drive around using the WASD keys and has a turret that points towards the mouse pointer at all times. This time, what we're going to talk about is how to make the map, the, the level that the tank is going to drive around on. In your assets folder, there is a terrain tile set, which looks like this, that's made up of a bunch of 128 by 128 tiles that are just laid out in a grid like this. And we want to use these in a tile map node so that we can draw our level however we want to draw it using these individual tiles. Now, uh, if you know how tile maps work, you have to create individual sprites out of each of these squares, and you can optionally attach collisions to them, which we don't need for the ground, but you put those all together, and then you convert that into a tile set, which is a Godot resource object, and then you use that in your tile map to draw everything. Now, since these are all pretty much identical, they're all squares and they're laid out in a regular grid rather than cut them up one by one and make these one by one which is going to be kind of tedious I thought that I would make a script that will just parse this image and convert it into a tile set directly so how do we do that well I'm going to make a new scene and I'm just going to get a node as its root I'm just going to call this tile set maker and I'm going to save this in a terrain folder. Now to this scene, I'm going to add a sprite. And in the texture, I'm going to put the asset image. Now this, I'm doing it this way because this scene, I can reuse this and any texture I put in the sprite node is going to get sliced up by the script. So I suspect later on we'll have some more images that we want to add or some more details we want to add to the map. And we might need to use another tile set in here so uh, we can reuse this script. So we're going to add a script to the tile set maker node. And what this is going to do is look at that texture, slice it up into 128 by 128 chunks and stick them into a tile set object and then save that. So what we need to do is we need to configure the tile size so that we know what size we need to slice this up into. So 128 by 128 is the size of the drawings. And the texture that we're going to use is the sprites texture. And then we can just do everything in the ready so that when we run the scene, it'll do it and we'll be done. So first we need to get the size of the image. So the texture uh, width is going to be the get width. And then we're going to divide by the tile size dot X. So that means if I'm, you know, 10 tiles wide, It'll be the text size of the texture divided by 128 should come out to 10. And then text height is the same. Uh, get height over tile size dot y. Then we need to make a new tile set image, or sorry, a new tile set object. We do that with the new constructor. So now I have a new tile set called TS, and now I just need to iterate through however many tiles there are. So I count to text width and I run y from 0 to text height and then I'll have a loop to go through everything. Now the region we want to split up that or sorry we want to slice out of that texture is the rectangle from x times tile size dot x comma y times tile size dot y 
and then the width is put this over here tile size.x tile, tile size.y so then we have our region that we are cutting out of the texture now when we put this into the tile set it needs to be assigned an ID an ID is just a unique number, an integer, assigned to each tile. So we need to come up with a unique ID. And I'm just going to do x plus y times 10. And that'll be, that'll make sure every tile's ID is unique to its position. So then on our tile set, we create a tile with that ID. And then we say tile set texture of that ID to the texture and then tile set region will use the rectangle okay and so now when this loop is done I will have every tile created so at the end we can use resource saver to save the image and we're gonna save it in the terrains sorry terrain folder and I'm gonna call it terrain tiles.tres uh, we save that that object so this saves resource saver will save any kind of any resource type object which tile set is and you just give it the location and file name so that's it so now when we I'll open up the terrain folder here so you can see if I run this script when I close it I now have a tile resource here in my terrains folder so I'll close that. We can use that again later if we ever need it to slice up another image. And we're going to make a new folder now to be our level, the, the map that we're going to start with. Now eventually we might make more, but we're going to start with just one. So I'm going to use a node 2D for the root. And I'm just going to call this map 01. Just since it's going to be the first one, we'll see how it goes. I'm still not 100% finalized on how I'm going to design these maps. So I'm kind of playing it by ear right now. I know I'm going to use a tile map node to be the terrain. So in that tile map node, we need to put our resource that we made. And there's all our tiles showing up. All right, let me zoom out some here. Uh, we need to change the cell size defaults to 64 and these tiles are 128 and now we've got our tile set working and we can you know go out here and draw stuff and everything looks fine so we want to draw some kind of level don't worry about the size right this is the the game window is showing right here so the map can be much larger than the game window because we'll we'll attach a camera to the player so that they can scroll the map as they run around. So feel free to draw your map out however you want. I'm going to put some roads, some various roads going around different places, and I'll skip over the boring drawing part. Okay, so here's a quick map I drew up. Just made some roads going around. got a highway running down the middle. Um, I used a little bit of the sand tiles on a little bit of the grass because we have the nice transition tiles between them. And, you know, that's fine for now. I named this ground because one of the useful things you can do with tile maps is you can layer them and have additional tile maps on top of this one that, you know, place your trees or rocks or buildings or whatever. And we'll probably do that later. So I'm going to call this one ground. And so now we're going to save this and we're going to put this in a go up a level and make a folder called maps. We're going to save our maps in there and that will give us enough to get started now to our map here we want to add our player so i'm going to instance from the tanks folder my player in there and there's my player over here in the corner and if i were to run the scene my player would start out here and i can only see a little bit of the map so what we want to do is we want to take our player scene and add a camera to it so I'm going to add a cam 2D, set the current to on, and then I'm also going to zoom out a little bit. Uh, let's try 1.4. Let's 
see how that goes. And then if I run my map, I should have, there we go, there's my tank. I can zoom around and see my level. Now, one of the things we want to do is we need to put some limits on this camera because when I reach the edge of the map, I want it to stop scrolling, right? I actually want it to stop scrolling when it reached about, or exactly, there, right? And if I go down any further, then that map won't scroll anymore. And the camera limits are set. If we go back over to our camera here, they're, the limits are set left, top, right, and bottom. These are your maximum and minimum X and Y values for the, the camera. And so if I scroll out just to show you, so this, this purple rectangle here shows the camera, what the camera sees, right? So if I were to move it around, which I don't want to move it around separately. If I were to move the player around, you would see the camera move too. Now let's say I didn't want the camera to go past the zero, zero point. I'm just going to do this temporarily to show you. So if I were on the camera set, I wanted the left limit to be zero, and I wanted the top limit to be zero. Then when I move my player around, see how that rectangle stops scrolling when it hits those limits. And so we want our camera to do that as well, but we want it to do it automatically based on the size of the map you drew. Depending on how big the map was, that's how big we want it to be. So I'm going to make a script for this map. Um, I'm going to name it just map.gd instead of map01 because all our different maps are actually going to use the same script, which is just going to tell them how to populate themselves, how to set the map. Uh, camera limits, etc. So here's our script for that. Now this is going to happen in the ready function. We're going to want to say set camera limits and then we're going to define what that what that function does here. Now I'll zoom in a little bit. All right so to set the camera limits we need to find out how much of the map is being used. So we can use do that by using the ground get used rect. And that gets a rectangle telling you how much space your map is taking up, right? If we go back over here, that'll be this rectangle. Right? If I were to place another tile, like for some reason I placed a tile over here, now that rectangle would be would extend over to there. But I don't want that. So that means that we now know how big our map total is. So we also want to know how big the cells of the map are so that we know how that combines. All right, so we get the cell size from the ground. So now we know, now we'll know from here that our map is say 200 tiles wide. The cell size is 128, so the full width of the map is 200 times 128. And so that's how we can find out what to set our map limits to. So on the player, camera, we want to set the limit left equal to map limits position dot x times the map cell size dot x. And then we just do that again for the other three sides. Okay, and there I've duplicated that three more times and set the four limits. So now if we run our script again, we should see the camera. See, the camera does not scroll past the edges of the map, no matter how close we get to them. And we'll go down to the bottom just to show you that the bottom works too. There's the bottom of the map and I can't go any further. So setting your camera limits like that is super useful when you want to avoid having those ugly gray voids around the edges of your level as you move around. All right, I think that's going to do it for this installment. In the next video, we will talk about adding some enemy tanks to this level that will drive around and give us something to avoid. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.